Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Easy SAP ABOP. So I had a request from a subscriber, either via email or comment, can't remember, but one of the two. Um, how does the refresh method work on the CL underscore SALV underscore table class? So what I've done, I've created this really simple, actually it's not a module pool program because this is just a regular executable program. If I come here and execute it, I can execute it without a transaction. But having created this in SE80, I can add screens, GUI status, GUI title. So we'll go over what I've done real quick. I've got this program. I've created a GUI title. It just says uh, my test program. Created a GUI status. The GUI status is just going to only be back cancel exit for our back cancel exit buttons. That's the only thing I've done in here. I haven't done anything else. So I'll go back. I've created a screen called it 9000. Created a module status 9000. Status 9000 sets the PF status, the title bar, and calls this init tree method. We'll get into that in just a second. And it handles the user command. Back cancel or exit, it'll leave program. So that's all we're doing in those two modules. Um, the layout is going to be like the most simple one you've ever seen. Our actual layout for screen 9000 is just going to be a custom GUI container. We'll let this load. I've just made a big old screen here and created a custom GUI container, which is right down here, custom control, and called it container one. Get out of here. Go back to our actual program. This is going to be the driver program for this. Let's look down here. Start a selection. I'm calling screen 9000, which we just saw. Again, I went over these two modules, but in the process before output module, I've got this method, well, not this method, this subroutine called init table. Let's go over our global variables so you guys understand what's going on. I've got a table, GTSPFLI, which is a standard table of type SPFLI, a structure for that GTSPFLI, just called GSSPFLI, OK code, which is going to be our user command code for our actual screen 9000, GR table and container, which are references respectively to CLSAV table and GUI custom container. So what's going to happen, these modules are going to be called respectively. The output module is going to be called before the screen is displayed. It'll call this a knit table. A knit table is going to see if the container, our GR container, is already um, assigned, bound, if there's already an object. If it's not, it's going to create our container, container name one. We're going to select some data from SPFLI into our global table, GTSPFLI. Then we're going to create our CLSALV table by calling the factory method passing in the parent, our container, as GR container, which is on our screen 9000. <clears throat> We're going to say assign this CLSALV table to GR underscore table, which is a global reference to the CLSALV table class. And then this is going to be the actual table that displays data, GTSPFLI, where we've selected data into it from here. Next, we're going to get a reference to our functions, CLSALV functions. We're going to get them from our table via the get functions method. And here's where we're going to do something pretty neat. You can only do this if your CLSALV table is running in a container. So if it's running in a container, you can add functions dynamically with this add function method. We're going to add three functions, one called add, delete, and edit. Everything else here is kind of self-explanatory. The um, icon's kind of cryptic. What you're actually going to have to do to get this icon is go into report show icon, double click on an icon, and then figure out its internal name. That's what this report expects. Then we're going to get our events, CLSALV events table, from our global reference to our CLSALV table into this variable, lr underscore event. We're going to set a handler method for this event and then we're going to display our table. So if I just run this really quickly, what I'm going to actually have happen is our process before output method is going to get called, it's going to init the tree, and it's going to do these different add table row, delete table row, edit row, and we've actually got this non-full screen. I mean, it comes out pretty far here, but this is just where the screen painter um, edge of the screen is. 
the table control doesn't extend that far but we've got our screen with our data in it we can select single rows here um, and we have three added functions we've coded for back well I got those two backwards back exit cancel but back cancel exit in our process after input module user command underscore 9000 I say if it's any of these leave program which is why if I click on back exit or cancel then it leaves program so what we want to look at really here though guys is the refresh method of CLSALV table now the refresh method for CLSALV table is really easy basically if you modify the um, internal table that the CLSALV table is displaying so if I scroll up in my code it's this GTSPFLI any modifications to this table are going to be reflected when you call the refresh method on your gr underscore table your CLSALV table reference so to demonstrate that I've set this handler classes handle method for the event added function of CLSALV events table it's going to import ESALV function which is just a function code so I'm gonna actually create the implementation for this handle method I'm gonna do a case statement on ESALV function we're going to check whether either the add added function, the delete added function, or the edit added function, which we define down here in these add functions methods, was called. And we're going to take different steps depending on which. So we'll see add, we get our whale. I'm actually trying to see what the heck I got going on here. These need to be defined further down here. <laughs> Sorry guys, I should have checked this code a little bit before I decided to show it to all you folks. So in the add method, all we're doing is taking our global structure SPFLI car ID and setting it to TST, appending our structure to our global table, which is uh, being represented in GR table, and then calling this refresh method. So if we run this code, we should see a new line added with just car ID populated with TST. And all that's going to do is just add this uh, fictitious record. So when we run our code, we'll uh, be able to see what this add function is doing. And again, this is down here from the add function. We said that the name was add. So this add function is going to get called as opposed to these other functions. So now if we run our code, let me say add row. We see down here, carrier ID TST, it's added. I could click this again and again and again. It's going to keep doing the same thing. So that's not very dynamic. Neither is delete. I've said just delete GT SPFLI at index one and then refresh the table. So if I run this again, I say delete row. I could delete all the way to the end here, which I won't because I'll get a short dump because I haven't checked to see if there's any rows remaining. But how do we do something more dynamic so edit row all I'm doing in edit row is I'm editing this manually I'm saying city from equals Savannah um, you would typically prompt a user for input but I'm just doing it for this but what we're doing is we're getting the rows object from our table we're saying get selections in this case our selections can only ever be one because we have our table in single selection mode so we get our selected rows, which is going to be an internal table here of length one. So rows is going to be that table of length one. So we're going to say read rows into row. Row is going to be type integer. That is just the table index. So of our internal table, row is going to be our, our index. So when this runs, if I say edit row, it's going to read this table into um, row row is going to be the index so if this is the third one for example it's going to read three into row so read table rows into row that's what that does so now this row of type integer is going to be three then we can read our internal table gtspfli into our structure gsspfli modify some values and then call the modify gtspfli from our structure and give it the index and then refresh our internal table. So what this is going to do is anything that I've got selected it's going to change the city from departure city to Savannah when I click edit row. 
Again, this is a little bit more dynamic, but it's still doing some uh, predefined behavior. So you guys could get very uh, creative with this. You could do all sorts of things. But if you look here, Savannah, 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 that's what I've done here. So that's how you do a basic. And I'll just scroll through this really quick so you guys can see it. That's at start a selection. I'm just calling our screen 9000. A couple of PAI and PBO modules. This is like really where all the, the meat happens here. We're assigning our uh, CLS ALV table, adding some functions and icons. Again, this is from report show icon. Double click on one of those icons in that report and you'll get this internal ID. And that's where your icon is. This is cryptic and I don't like it. So usually what I'll do is I'll say icon open folder, whatever the icon name is out here. So edit, I would come down here and say, in, you know, comments, icon, change. So that's something good to do since it has to be so cryptic. Either that or create a constant for it so that it, you know, makes a little more sense. We're uh, handling our events from our CLSALV events table in this local class up here, ending here and starting here. So that, guys, is pretty much everything you need to know. Well, basic description of everything you need to know for the refresh method. Um, there are some parameters. You can actually read that refresh method documentation in transaction SE24. You can look at those parameters and better figure out what's going on there. But, you know, so we can add rows. We can delete rows. I can actually come down here and say edit row. So that's essentially what the refresh method is going to do. It's going to reflect in the ALV display any changes that were made to the underlying internal table. So, hope this video was helpful. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment or shoot me an email if it's something a little more specific and personal that I might not necessarily need to make a video for. But, um, you know, subscribe if you think this channel is helpful and I'll continue to make videos. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next video.